when God gave the nations the church he gave that nation the answer to their problems because God's kingdom is not just a spiritual place what you don't know is that God's kingdom is a country there's power in knowledge there's power in information there's power in knowing something if you know what has been written concerning health it is easy to claim healing if you know what has been written concerning finance it is easy to claim wealth if you know what has been written concerning business you, there are words in the scriptures that have you run to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Globalization is what um, the world understands today. You need to know where the world has moved to. The world is becoming more complex at the same time more simple. It's becoming simpler by the day. It's also becoming more confiscated, more complex by the day. So if you don't know what is going on around your world now, you would miss out. There are opportunities around you everywhere. Amen. There are opportunities around you everywhere. If you are not measuring up, if you are not succeeding, it's not the fault of your economy. It's not the fault of your government. It's not the fault of your family. It's simply tied to something you don't know. Success in life is tied to two things. Failure in life is also tied to two things. If you see a man who is failing, the first reason may be because he doesn't know a particular thing. Ignorance is one of the first factors of failure. The second factor of failure is indiscipline to apply what you know. So it's possible I know something and I'm still failing. The difference now is not that I don't know the thing. The difference is that I'm not diligent to do what I know. Then you see a man who is succeeding. Two things. He knows something and he's doing what he knows. Those are the two reasons why people succeed. So that is why this meeting is packaged so we can give you first-hand information. From the beginning of the meeting up till now, there's been massive, all kinds of information. All kinds of information. If there's nothing <clears throat> that happens in your life after this conference, I can trace it, not to ignorance now, but to indiscipline to do, because now you already know them. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to share with you on what I tie to the power of information. Because that is what is ruling the world now. You want to know the difference between one successful man and another? Another man who is a failure. The difference is not in the volume of money in their pockets. The difference is not that that guy has more money than the other. The difference is simply in this thing called information. As information. Because information is made up of two major words. Actually, that word in is a prefix. The formation is a suffix. So if you look at the word in there, it talks about internal. It talks about inside. It talks about something that is within. So in is something that is within you. It's something that has to do with the internal. The formation has to do with the process of making. The word form means to make. Form means to make. It means to create. So information by way of definition is inside formation. Internal creation. Internal awareness. Internal making. Transformation means, you know, the word trans is also a prefix. Trans. What does trans mean? When you hear of transit, it means something is in motion. Trans talks about motion. Trans talks about progression. It talks about advancement. That is what trans means. Then that one is called transformation. So information, which has to do with inward building, internal making, is what gives birth to outside or external progress. See somebody here I'm talking about now. That is what it means. So transformation is what finally gives birth to what you call manifestation. 
Hello? Transformation finally gives birth to what you call manifestation. Now, let me show you what happens when you get information. Information builds you internally. What you have stored up on the internal begins to show forth on the external, which is transformation. Certain growth starts happening. Certain changes happen within you. It is when transformation has been complete that manhood takes place. Hello. That is why it is called manifestation. So you cannot manifest until you are a man first. The key to manifest is to be transformed. Manifestation are for men. You can't manifest in business. You can't manifest in industry. You can't manifest in technology. You can't manifest in whatever, in career, until you have become a man. A man is someone who is willing to pay the price for knowledge. Children need to depend on the knowledge of other people to excel. For instance, when you are a child, how much knowledge did you need to know to brush your mouth? How much knowledge did you need to have to feed yourself? How much knowledge did you need to have to take your bath? You needed the knowledge of your parents. You needed the knowledge of your mother. You needed the knowledge of your, of your auntie or somebody to take care of you, to bath you, to brush your mouth. But when you become a man, your functionality now depends on what you So when you see two men with two different results, go and check man has gone through a circle. It starts from information. I want to pick that element called information because until we understand how it works, you can live in a rich nation as an obscure person. You can live in a rich city being obscured. You can go to the same school others went to graduate and you're carrying CVs and carrying files all over the nation looking for jobs. Meanwhile, another guy is employing labor but you sat in the same class. There's something that other guy knows you need to know, my friend. That factor called information is what has brought the world where it is now. You want to know how the world moved from primitivity into civility? Go and find out. There's something people like Thomas Edison sat down to find out. There's something people like Michael Faraday. People like, what are their names? About Einstein and the rest of them. They sat down to discover something. There's power in knowledge. There's power in information. There's power in knowing something. What is keeping you low in life is what you don't know. If a man is doing well in life, go and check. There's something he knows better than you. <laughs> For me, I don't define a man by the possession of physical cash. I define a man's success by the possession of mental cash. You know, knowledge is actually money. Because that is actually the raw material that produces the physical one. Knowledge is the intangible material that creates the tangible. What you need is that intangible material first. People are looking for money. People are looking for wealth. People are looking for more prosperity, more income, increased cash flow and all of that. But they are not taking time to get the intangible. Everything that exists in the physical first was in the spiritual. Nothing just came to be in the physical. Everything first existed in where? In the spiritual. Money has no value. Is somebody here what I'm talking about now? That thing called paper actually has no value. What gives it value is what you know. What makes it gravitate in your direction is what you know. But the sad news is that all over Africa, we see a high level of ignorance. The problem of Africa or the problem of Nigeria is not the problem of color pigmentation. <laughs> Someone said, if you take Africans to the United States of America, how many of you know Africa had existed before that nation was discovered? Africa is actually one of the oldest, if not the oldest continent that ever existed. Before the nation, America, Africa was. So if you take Africans now to America, Nigerians, somebody said, 
give Nigerians in America just 10 years. At most, five years. Then is even too much. Then transfer what you call them, Americans, down here. Give Nigerians five years in America. They will turn America to Nigeria. Then give Americans five years in Nigeria. They will turn Nigeria to what America looks like, or even better. So the problem is not that that guy is white. Because if you open his head and remove his brain cells, the same color of brain cells in your head is the same color of brain cells in his So pigmentation of the skin has nothing to do with this. That guy is doing better than you, not because of his white complexion. The key resides on what they know. I checked the economy of the U.S. I've checked the economy of developed nations. And I discovered central to their development is this thing called information. This thing called value for knowledge. I looked at Singapore recently. What is one of the things Lin Kuan Yong, the prime minister of Singapore, did? When he moved Singapore from third world to first world, what was it, what was it he did? A nation that, naturally speaking, has no deposit of resources. They don't have water. Singapore needs to import water for irrigation. They need to import everything. They don't have steel. They don't have gold. They don't have oil. They don't have stuff like that has. But what is it that is making Singapore's economy moving? It moves by the day. Lin Kuan Yun understood that way to build a nation is to build it on value system. And one of the values to build a nation on is to get the citizens of that nation to place a high premium on information. He understood this thing called information culture is one of the culture that can structure your culture. One of the structure, one of the cultures that can restructure the economy of any nations until people have the culture for reading, until people have culture for information. There's little or nothing. Our resources, call it oil, whatever, call it tin, call it coal. There's little or nothing we can do with those resources. We'll keep exporting it to nations who have information. Value for knowledge. The power of information cannot be emphasized. You can't underestimate it. It is the key for your personal success. It is the key for an economic success. For a nation's success. You want to see national transformation. The key is to get the citizenries of that nation value information. One of the things globalization is doing now with our economy is that it has made people to replace technology for reading. Actually, globalization was meant to enhance study. Globalization was meant to enhance information. That's why you, you call it information communication technology. It's called ICT. Globalization was meant to enhance reading. It wasn't meant to replace reading with something that is more or less destructive. People now use the internet for all kinds of rubbish. They use the social media now for all kinds of rubbish. But all these things give you access to all kinds of information, to all kinds of literature. Why is the government of Nigeria doing poor compared to the government of the US, compared to the government of Ukraine, compared to the government of, what is it called, Singapore, UK, and all that? It. We have leaders who have no value for information. Somebody said he walked into the office of the secretary to state government. A particular state. I won't make but the state is just around you. He walked into the office and he said, Sir, I don't know if the memorandum of understanding is signed. He said, what is memorandum of understanding? SSG. How far you go is to what you know. <laughs> is somebody hearing me now? You can't take people farther than your knowledge. You can't take people farther than your knowledge, my friend. The key remains having value for information. You want to see success in your life. What you don't know is the barrier to your success. What you don't know is what is stopping your progress. Don't blame it on witchcraft. 
You know, in this part of the world, we can pray. Declare all nights. We can declare all week. Declare all months. Fasting and prayer. Nigerians know how to fast and pray, but they don't know how to tax their pain. Know how to fast and pray, but they don't know how to do what? Tax their brain. They can deal with demons, my friend. They deal with witchcraft. They deal with all the bats and all the cats and all that. That the rat just flew past your room now. You declare night virgin. Cockroaches. Why are you wasting God's resources on cockroach? And a cockroach just slipped into your room. I bind. Get that anointing oil in the name of Jesus. I release fire. Fire. And the cockroach is wondering, what have I done now? What have I done? What have I done? Now you heard a bad sound in the night and so nobody will rest in the house again. You declare night VG. Wake everybody up from sleep. Say, so come, let us pray, let us pray. A man named Smith Wigglesworth. Was that Smith Wigglesworth or who? I've forgotten. One of God's generals. Before he passed on, he was sleeping. And the devil actually came. This was not witch. I mean devil. Satan himself. Is that okay? Who, who was that? I don't know if it was him or whatever. But he was sleeping, enjoying his sleep. The devil came into the kitchen. Was it kitchen or outside? He was playing with utensils, disturbing the whole environment. This general from sleep. Come down and check if it were children who were playing. He opens the door and saw Satan himself. Saw Satan playing. This scattering the whole stuff in the, in the compound. He opened the door and looked. And he said, I thought it was somebody serious. <laughs> and he went into the room and slept off. He saw Satan. You, you saw cockroach. And the whole night, you have to do warfare. <laughs> the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against cockroaches and rats. What's your problem? Why are you wrestling with them? Poverty problem cannot be handled with prayers, my friend. What prayers does is release the anointing. But that anointing needs to find a platform. It needs to find something to fertilize. It needs to find something to grow. You're doing business. If you know the technicalities, the ins and outs of doing that business, you have competitive edge. You know excellence, business excellence, customer care relationship. You know how to service relationship. You know how to keep customer database. You know all those things. You know how to reinvest your, or reploy, what do you call it? Plow back your, your, your profits into business. You know how to cut down on expenditures and increase your income. The moment you know all these things, what the anointing does is to give you grace to increase. Grace to progress. Grace for success. That's what it does. But anointing and resting on ignorance will provoke annoyance. So people don't know what they do when they pray to God for anointing, for exploit, anointing, for success in business. Yet, you go to their shops and everything looks very shabby. Looks very dirty. The whole place stinks. No culture of excellence. That guy doesn't know. You want to make money. You don't know that money, or what you call net worth, is tied to network. Money is tied to relationship. You don't know how to relate with your customers. They come to your shop, you use your mouth and send them away. Somebody comes, I want to pay a, for a good, what, two million naira. And because he said, can I do a mobile app transfer, online transfer of the money? I, I, I don't work with cash. Two million is too big to work with. You send the customer away. And you are still doing night VG. But your breakthrough came at your doorstep, but because you don't know online banking. That was your uncle, my friend. You told me about him. And you can just miss a whole opportunity of a lifetime because of knowledge. See? Is somebody hearing me? The success of leadership, the success of business, the success in finance, success in career, success in relationship. Can I tell you, what builds relationship is not love. <laughs> love actually can open the heart of somebody who oh, get this. Those feelings are good. Those erotic, whatever, are good. But you cannot depend on love to build relationship. What builds and establishes relationship is what you call 
principles or knowledge. The Bible said that by wisdom is a house built. So house in the Bible signifies anything. House does not necessarily mean the literal house. This one we are living in now. House can mean business. House can mean finance. House can mean marriage. House can mean relationships. House can mean school, academics. House can mean whatever you want to call it. House can be anything. But the way to build and establish that stuff is through wisdom. It's through knowledge. I can give you one million to start a business now if you don't have the knowledge on how to multiply it, how to increase it, how to keep it, you're going to waste it. And let me let you know this. You cannot solve a problem at the level of knowledge you were when you created it. For you to create a solution to a problem, for you to live where you are currently, you need a higher level of knowledge. So it is possible to fall down in life unconsciously, but to get up, you need to be conscious. <laughs> and it takes knowledge to be conscious. You can fall down without knowing. You can fall down and not know how it happened. Money can leave your pocket without knowing, but for you to replace that money, you need to be conscious. And that art is what we call information. The way to get back is true information. You want to recover what you've lost. You need to know something higher than what you knew when you caused the problem. Is somebody here what I'm talking about now? True wisdom is a house built. Leadership must be built on knowledge. Leadership must be built on information. Finance. I'm going to show you a couple of things from the scripture. What Jesus stand out in his time? Was it anointing? He had anointing. Was it power? He had power. But what was that element, that key factor that made the scribes and the Pharisees marvel at him? He speaks in, in, in congresses and men would wonder, where does this guy have this wisdom that proceeds from his mouth? How does he speak? How, where, where does he have it? Where does he get it from? The guy relates with fishermen and they are dazed. He relates with tax collectors. They are dazed. He relates with men of all kinds of class and they want the point, what you don't understand is that that didn't come to anointing. It came through sitting down and reading. That is why the Bible said, Jesus said, I have come to do according to what has been written concerning me in the volume of the books. So how did Jesus know that he came to solve economic problems? Because he read economics. How did he know he came to solve leadership problems? Because he read something about leadership. How did he know he came to solve the problem of business? Because he read something about the stock market, about you know, when Peter toyed all night. He toyed all night, casting nets here and there. And he couldn't catch anything. The guy who helped him catch that money, who helped him cut fishes, was Jesus. The question is, what has a rabbi? You call him a religious preacher. What has a religious, religious, religious preacher got to do with fishing? He never sat in any fishing school. How did he know about fishing? You think it was anointing? No, he read the textbook. He read it. So, a guy who read it and even chattered, accountant, chattered fisherman, MSC, toiled all night. Jesus came and looked at him. He said, you've been toiling all night. What you don't know is that you are, you are insane. Fishes don't swim around in the night. They sleep in the night. How can you be toiling all night to catch fish? Are you mad? They will see you. They don't see you in the daytime. Fishes see at night. So when you cast the net, the guy just sleeps away. Because Peter didn't say we toyed all day. He said we toyed all night. So Jesus understood the formula. So he said, okay, I want to show you something you don't know. Just give me that boat. Let me do some crusade all night. <laughs> While you are toiling all night to catch fish, just wait. When it is daybreak, I will show you what you don't know. Jesus took out. It wasn't anointing, my friend. It wasn't grace. It was knowledge. He knew. You don't, fishes don't toy. They don't run around in the night. They sleep. <laughs> they see you at night. So when it was morning, he said, P, P, come, come, come. Get your net. Oh, yeah, cast it. And the guy cast the thing. And the whole fish is entered. And he said, oh, master, master. Get thee away from me. 
but I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm sure Jesus said in his heart, yeah, the boundary of your success is in the limits of your knowledge. The boundary of your harvest is in the limits of your knowledge. The boundary of your baskets, the boundary of your harvest is in your capacity in knowledge. The key to stand out, the key to stand tall from your contemporaries is to know something whenever you speak, whenever you do a thing, you do business, they wonder what charm are you using. It's called knowledge charm, information charm. X-ray the life and ministry of Jesus. It wasn't everything he did by anointing. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? It wasn't everything he did by anointing. Everything he did, so 80%, go and read up some of them. More, more of them were based on this wisdom and knowledge factor. The rest, just few, were premise on anointing. So, why are Christians looking for power, power, anointing, anointing? The Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom. He also grew in favor with God. So he had a good spiritual relationship with the Father. But what about wisdom? Why are church business people, Christians, looking for anointing? They go to church. They bless oil for them. They bless salt. They bless sand. So they can go and put it around their business premises. What is all that? You see in the church, they can say to a guy with one million naira, he starts a business. Give him two months, the guy is doing well. You think this guy is... After one year, the guy's business starts crumbling and you think it is a curse. His enemies have come to attack him. What you gave that guy was money. What you didn't give him was the knowledge on how to use money. Because money makes it for itself wings and the fly. There's a way to keep it. It comes through knowledge, information. One guy told his father, Father, I want my share of the estate. My share of everything you own. All the money, all the whatever. The father said, okay, take, bye-bye. He took all the money and he went away into a faraway city. What did he do? Spending the money. He sees this fleet of girls. <laughs> Let's go to Suya Joint. Too much of money. He sees this other, even if you're a ritualist, you need to do business and you need to know business principles. I'm telling you the truth. Go and check every ritualist. They don't sit idle. They are more judicious. You see, they don't give money anyhow. They go for occasions. You're looking at the guy to give. He's not giving anything. When he wants to give, he just, he has calculated all his income, his profit. He has, the guy, before he dishes out that stuff, he checks. He's a ritualist too. You know what that ritual does the first ritual he does is open up the coven to release the money that ritual doesn't sustain the money <laughs> he didn't get it the ritual doesn't sustain the money what sustains it now is principle so they do the ritual that's why when we release grace you can get supernatural breakthrough somebody can just give you a contract of five million you will be stupid if you need supernatural breakthrough to keep the money what you need now is knowledge what you need now is principle Check, there are some of you who have been blessed. Blessed, you wasted. It wasn't the devil. It, was, it became time for you to spend frivolously. You started spending anyhow. Impulsive spending. You see things around town. You can't hold your appetite. You must it. Before you noticed it, you rented the biggest hostel, the biggest apartment. You were, you were trying with, you were driving with the one bedroom stuff. You just started a business. But as a copper, I even tell coppers, you can build your financial tree as a copper. One year, you have saved your alawi and started a good business. That was the best time. I go around town and coppers are sleeping in hotels. Paying for rooms for a whole year. And they are servicing it. That's stupidity. They are sleeping in hotels. Eating food in hotels. One night, 2,000. And before the whole day goes, 6,000 has gone. And the guy finishes getting to the labor market and he's carrying fire. You see a guy who's doing big boy or big girl. Now he's carrying papers. Nobody wants to give him a job. I meet a lot of them. They tell me if I know the thing I know now, I wouldn't have wasted my, you know. Who are you trying to impress? You are buying plasma. 
You're buying AC. Are they good? Yes. But they are for a time. You don't spend money on liabilities. Anything you're spending money on that won't double that money is a liability. There's a level where you get to, you start spending on liability. And even when you spend on liability, you spend on what I call profitable liabilities. Liabilities that don't take so much of money on you from you. Profitable ones. You can reduce costs and expenditures. It takes knowledge. So let me show you in the book of Matthew chapter 4. Let me show you a perfect example. <laughs> mm, something is happening to you in this meeting. Or I know that. I know that. Because church people need to be carriers of wisdom. They need to be carriers of knowledge. They need to be carriers of information. I value it. There's no day that passes by I don't settle down to devour a literature. I need to know something. This whole world, you, what runs it is not money, it's information. And another word you can use is ideas, knowledge. That is what runs this whole world. Somebody's knowledge got you the car. Somebody's knowledge got you electricity. It was somebody's knowledge that got you the stock market. Somebody's knowledge was what put up the banks. Somebody's information was what put up the aircraft. Somebody's information was what put up the microphone. Somebody's information was what put up the seats. There's nothing that exists that wasn't driven by information. We are living in an age of high info. Everything is connected to information. Can't you see the level you're occupying in life? It's because your information Everything that manifests on the outside, first of all, begins with, within. It starts from within. Before a bed becomes a bed, it incubates inside an egg. Before you even came out here, you first existed inside for nine months. You know, I tell some people who have not yet seen the tangible results of some of the efforts they are making, don't worry. Information is like the gathering of clouds. It's called information. Sometimes it takes time to build it. But give it time. When you have consistently developed that thing, naturally it pushes. That success pushes. That idea, it pushes. The finances, it gravitates towards you. Without so much of force, it gravitates. Okay. Matthew chapter 4. I would read quickly from verse 1. It's a long one, but let me read quickly. I want to show you Jesus' foundation for success and how that Jesus defeated the devil not by power. It wasn't anointing he used. It, it was only one time he employed power. <laughs> one time. You know how I want to be praying? I want to, I want to make prayer, prayer very simple. Anytime I spend hours, weeks, days, whatever, praying, I'm just praying to have a good intercourse with my father. Not that I'm binding issues that wisdom can do. I just want to lie down there, lift up my hands, and I'm just having fellowship with my father. That is the, that is the kind of prayer. Just to give him an enabling environment to work in my ministry. Just give him an enabling environment to do what he wants to do. I just depend on him for more ideas. I depend on him for more grace. I depend on him for more enablement. That's my essence of, hope, of prayer. That's my whole idea of prayer. Some people will pray and pray and pray and pray. Okay, go out and get the contract. They won't go. They will pray and pray and pray. Okay, go and sharpen your communication skill. If you are in an elevator with the governor of your state, you just have that opportunity. And that elevator is going to climb for about five seconds or let's say three seconds. What will you say to the governor that can change your history forever? Change your whole life forever. In 10 seconds, 30 seconds, that elevator is going to climb to the fifth floor. And you are there, opportune to be in that elevator. That is what you call elevator speech. You need to know how to build it. He doesn't have all the time. The moment the elevator stops, he goes away. But you must be able to know how to strike a deal with that guy in 30 seconds that can get him give you his card. 
and say, call me. I will tell my PA to clear, to put the time, book a time between both of us, 8 a.m. Monday morning. I want to hear more of this. So, have you gotten information on how to sharpen your communication skills? Have you gotten information on how to build your public speaking skills? Have you gotten it? Can you sell an idea in 30 seconds? There may be no money in your pocket now, but do you have that skill? It can fetch that money, my friend. In 30 seconds, you have convincingly spelled out an idea and you'll get it. People are getting millions through you win project and all that. The secret is communication skill. Can you sell that idea? You can have a good idea. You, want, you know what you want to do. You know it. You want to start a factory that produces shoes. Good idea. But can you package that idea? You compress the idea. Can you reduce the idea from 16 gig to, what is it called? Those of you in the IT, you know them. Get to 500 megabytes, MP3 format. Can you bring it to that level? All those big things you want to do. Can you just reduce it? In five minutes, they give you time to speak. Can you deliver? And the panel would want, wow, that guy knows what he wants to do. He has clarity of purpose and vision. Can you give him that contract? Give him the money. So you see that the, the, Jesus didn't waste time with the devil. He didn't have time to bind him. In the name of Jesus, thou devil, thou fallen angel, you were with me in heaven, but now you are a rebellion. I cast you. I remove you. I defeat you. I scatter balance you. You will finish doing all those stuff and the guy will still have his way. He will still win the fight. Can't you see people who fall victims of the devil's devices and temptation? It's not because they didn't pray. Can you imagine how a whole if every evening had fellowship with Every evening, had fellowship with God. Every evening, had fellowship, worship session, prayer session, word session. And just one day, the devil visited. She fell. What was the contest? It wasn't a spiritual contest. It was a knowledge contest. The lady had not stored up that information. God said, yes. But did you take time to know why? Did you take time to find out? God just said, okay, that's all right. That is why what you are hearing is not as important as <laughs> what you are doing with what you have heard. It is at the point of action that knowledge is made understandable. That you just heard the thing doesn't mean you know it. You need to know how to put what you have heard to work. That is where you get clarity of what you know. So did Eve act on what she know? She had, but she always desired it. So the day the devil came, he didn't use any spiritual force. What he used was mental. It was a mind stuff. He used, he used knowledge and he finished that girl, finished that lady. Because what she just had was beauty. You can see all over Eve. She was beautiful like some girls. They are practical ifs. You see them in NYS. They are beautiful, well dressed. You see the guy is so cute and handsome. He can wear nice blazers. He looks very fine. But come close to him in just five minutes. You are shocked. He can't say anything that will be meaningful. He can't impact you. Watch his tenses for the next five minutes. You'll be amazed. You wonder if he ever saw the four walls of a university. But he's beautiful, or she's beautiful. So Eve was very beautiful. Adam, handsome guy, 30 years old man, or 35 years, and the wife, 30. Fully grown old, but not grown up. So one small serpent just came and the rigma rolled. And they fell victim. Then this is another Jesus. Jesus' success was not a mystery. He took responsibility for knowledge. That is why the Bible said Jesus grew grew. So there's a process. It has to be consistent. You have to dedicate to it. You have to be committed to it. That process of storing up information. Jesus grew. He grew. He grew. He grew. He grew. So from zero age to one age to two years to what he was doing at the age of 12 in that temple was a function of what he had 
done from zero years up to 12 years. So he knew, even at that level, had not known more. He had to follow his parents back home so he can know more. So he kept growing. He kept growing until 30. I suppose that was the same age Adam was when he was created. So at that same point, Jesus manifested to show the world what Adam would have done. Came. He came into the same experience. The same way the devil came into the, into the garden. Now to make the matter even very interesting. Where Jesus was, was not a garden. He was in the wilderness. Adam was given estates. He lost the estates. Jesus was given wilderness. Through knowledge, he created the kingdom. Through wisdom, he created a paradise. Through wisdom, he created glory. And a man was given a whole paradise on earth. He was given a whole estate on earth. By deficiency of knowledge, God came down himself and took the Eden away from him. So, you can lose. You can gain through knowledge and lose through deficiency of it. So, check it now. I'm going to read it quickly. So we can see it. How did Jesus win that fight? How did he win that battle? Was it through speaking in tongues? Is good. Was it through power flow now, anointing flow? You have so watched Nigerian films, you are deceived. Because you saw a pastor with Bible defending himself. And every one of you have Bibles under your pillow when you sleep now. And you had a nightmare. You, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. This thing here is paper. There's a spirit inside of it you need to catch. <laughs> is somebody hearing me now? So what did Jesus do? Look at it. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness, not the garden. Adam was giving it free of charge. Jesus was led into a wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Now, get this, get this, get this, get this. Fasted 40 days, 40 nights. Spiritual exercise. Spiritual what? Exercise. There's another kind of exercise Jesus also did. That one is called mental word exercise. Jesus had already done all of that. When he was with Joseph, more of what he was doing was what? Sharpening his wisdom. At the age of 12, when he was with the Pharisees and all that, the scribes, what did the Bible say he was doing? He sat down doing what? Listening, listening, listening. Some of you go so much for power. Without wisdom. That's why you carry so much anointing, yet you can't communicate the heart of God. I want to ask you a question. When you were born, the first thing your father did was he to introduce you to the power. He introduced it to a school system. He introduced you. That is why when people get saved, they've been born again in the spirit. What you do at that point is not start ordaining them filling them with whatever is good. If you can do that, it's good. But after you have done that, my friend, what is next to do is to pass them through training. Pass them through discipleship. Pass them through leadership training. That is what is even going to spark the fire. It is through that knowledge. Do you know knowledge is a raw material for creating the anointing? Knowledge is a raw material. But the anointing is not a raw material for manufacturing wisdom. The anointing is not a raw material for creating knowledge. But knowledge can be a raw material for creating the anointing. It, was, it is one of the things that has sharpened me. So your parents passed through schooling. You went through the process of kindergarten. You went through crutch kindergarten. You went through pre-nursery, nursery. You went through, what is it called? Um, primary, from primary to secondary. What were you doing? You were building a foundation a foundation. That is the same way it is or it was with Jesus. So the reason why Jesus was giving earthly parents is so they can sharpen his mentality, sharpen his mind, sharpen his knowledge life. 
Why was he in the house of a carpenter? He was learning the art of wisdom. He needed to know how to handle hammer chisels and all that. That is why, because for you to combine this wood and combine that wood, combine this and combine that and nail it at a joint, you needed wisdom to do that. You needed knowledge. So, why was he not born in the house of a prayer warrior? Why was he not born in the house of a priest? Or sorry, in the house of, a, yes, a prayer warrior. He was always praying, always going to the temple to pray. Why was he not? Look at the problem with Samuel. Powerful prophets born and put in the house of Eli. Passed through all the anointing. The same problem Eli had with his children caught up with Samuel. So Samuel was deficient in all kinds of wisdom. He didn't know the art of parental upbringing, child upbringing, because it takes knowledge to raise children. It doesn't take anointing, my friend. Pour anointing on those children and don't give them knowledge. That anointing will be annoyance. Don't give them knowledge of what to avoid and what to do. So Eli was busy with crusades, busy with programs, but he didn't have the principle he didn't have the knowledge of how to raise godly seeds. Samuel came, took over the same passion. So he was going from one house to Saul, anointing people, pouring oil on David, pouring oil on Saul, pouring oil on people, declaring the counsel of God. But he didn't have knowledge and wisdom to raise children. Jesus had a different case. He first grew in wisdom. Now when he had matured in wisdom, the next price to pay was now the price for spiritual development. He had gotten wisdom. The next thing he needed now was power. Because the Jesus at 12 couldn't have laid hands on blind eyes and the eyes would open. But the Jesus at 12 could speak with Pharisees and scribes and they could be amazed. He could ask intelligent questions. And can you see what he was in the temple was asking questions. He would ask questions to be amazed. What intelligent question is this guy asking? 12 years. So at the wilderness, what he was doing now was pay the price for what? For power. But now, the devil knew the problem he has with Jesus is not a problem of power. So can you imagine that the devil came to test Jesus, to tempt him, and tempt him in anything that had to do with power. He tempted him with something that had to do with knowledge. And that was what God was looking for. When God created the first man, he said to the first man, okay, name all these animals. I didn't name them. Name them. What was he trying to test? Mental accuracy. He's interested in your mental life. God is interested in your wisdom. So he was trying to test mental accuracy. I wish I was Adam. I would have taught my wife how to also be knowledgeable. Because when Adam was naming the animals, woman was not there. So I'm sure when the woman came, Adam was too busy with the prophetic, busy with power, busy with work, and he forgot to teach the wife the place of wisdom and knowledge. Is somebody hearing me now? So, look at Jesus' experience. Let me read it quickly. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Was Eve also hungry? Was Eve hungry? Was Adam hungry? Hello? Do you know, if you, if you want to compare Jesus and Eve, compare Jesus and Adam, you may be making a mistake because Eve and Adam were not hungry because God said to them, of everything in this place, you are free to what? Eat. Why was it that one she was interested in? What makes you fall sometimes? <laughs> it's not what you have. Sometimes it's what you don't know. You can have wealth and still lose bigger wealth because of what you don't know. If Adam had the whole garden, you can eat anything you want. Why was Eve going for that one, that other one? God said, except this one, don't touch it. Why did she go to touch it? Why did she eat it? She didn't know. The problem was that she didn't have. The problem was not that they didn't have enough. The problem now was that they didn't know enough.
So get this now. Jesus was hungry. But Adam and Eve were not hungry because in the wilderness there was no, there was nothing. There was no food. There was no bread. There was no apple to eat. There was no pineapple. Can you imagine that there was so nothing that the, what the devil could do was to tell him. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones become bread. It got that bad. Command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now listen to the next one. Then the devil took him into the holy city and he had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. Get this one. And said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. This is the devil. This is the devil. The first time Adam said to him, Sorry, Jesus said to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. The devil said, okay, I now see. This is not a spiritual contest. It's now a knowledge contest. So the devil too knows the word. The guy is also knowledgeable. 80% of the problems he has caused all over the world, he caused through knowledge issues. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? He takes, tells a guy who takes drugs that drugs make you high. Knowledge. It's not a spiritual problem. So you feel if you take that stuff, you, might, you are on top of the world. It makes you tough. He tells a guy who takes up a gun and becomes a cultist. People will respect you if you do it. Knowledge issue. So the guy walks on that knowledge. He feels that's what is in vogue. He tells a lady, if you can sleep with more men, you make more money. The girl feels stained in protel is what is invoked now. He tells the businessman, all you need to do is tell some little lies. Tell them you bought the goose for 10,000, whereas you bought it for 5,000. Let them pay you 25,000. The problem is causing 80% resides within the head, the mind. Only 20% have to do with what you call spiritual power or the power of the devil. The rest have to do with the programming of the devil. And the programming of the devil resides within the mind. So what was the devil trying to do with Jesus? Program him. If he could program him, he could stop him from fulfilling his program. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? If the devil could program Jesus, he could stop him from fulfilling his program on earth. So the devil now came up with his own. What did he say? And he said to him, the devil took him, okay, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels charge concerning you and what will happen. And on their hands, they will bear you up against a stone. Lest you strike your foot against the word, a stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Listen to the devil again. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels to minister to him. Three times, the, three times, Jesus employed the use of wisdom. The last time when he said to the devil, get out of me, he employed power. But he didn't just employ power. He said, get thee behind me. Then he employed wisdom again. For it is written. No, didn't you see it? Maybe I should show you. Can you see the combination? That is why when you pray, you need knowledge, my friend. Because the key to answered prayer is praying the word. Not praying your will. If you know what has been written concerning health, it is easy to claim healing. If you know what has been written concerning finance, it is easy to claim wealth. If you know what has been written concerning prosperity, what has been written concerning business, you don't even know. There are words in the scriptures that have to do with your, with your business. 
They have to do with your career. They have to do with your finances. They have to do with your health. You don't know how to claim them because you don't know what is written. You don't have knowledge. So the guy combined spiritual power and combined mental power. He got the result. What did he do? Look at it. I'm going to show you again. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan. That was a spiritual command. That was a spiritual declaration. That was a spiritual order. For it is written. He combined the two and he got the result. Why are you doing business with power and you don't combine knowledge of that business? Why are you doing business or why are you doing career and you don't combine? Do you know that there are secrets? Great men have, ro- have risen above pass in their career. Not because they are more favored, not because they are in good locations, but because of knowledge. What is going to make this vision called Calf, this ministry, rise above other ministry is a combination of both of them. Power and knowledge. It doesn't matter the location. Are you hearing what I'm talking about now? Somebody knows you carry this thing as a pastor. You open your mouth. Men can measure the amount of weight that is coming out from your mouth. It doesn't matter. The tape can play in the US. It can play in Australia. It can play in UK. Somebody knows this guy is speaking internationally from a local standpoint. He looks for you. You become an international personality. You need to know what is written about ministry. You need to know what is written about music. You need to know what is written. Because men who know what is written will not be written of. Are you hearing me now? <laughs> if you know what is written concerning you, you can't be written of in life. It's not possible. How did a Daniel in a political world became so relevant? The guy knew what was written. Okay, let me show you. Maybe I should show you. Daniel chapter 9. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Go there. I need somebody to read it if you're there right now. Read it. Very quickly. Chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. People are in church and they are looking up to God, praying every day, crying. Have you gotten it? Who has gotten it? I need you to be very quick. Screaming aloud, Lord, give me grace. Give, and God is releasing grace, oh. But, but the grace comes on an empty head and it produces his grace. Yes, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Let me show you, Daniel. That's right. Give him a microphone. I want, you, I want everybody to hear him. Look into your Bible. You need to look in there. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, in the first year of Darius, the son of Harasus, the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books. Understood by what? The books. Not by anointing. I have finished it. The number of the years specified by the <laughs> word of the Lord. Listen. The number of the years specified by who? The the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that the end of chapter 2? Through two? Jeremiah, the prophet. Through Jeremiah, the prophet. Hear this. This is a general. In the political world. Daniel was not just a political figure. He was also a spiritual representative of God in Babylon. Daniel understood by books. The numbers of years as declared by the Lord. By reading the work of another prophet called Jeremiah. If you are into IT business, go and get Bill Gates' book. That's your Jeremiah. If you are a lawyer, go and get Femi Falana's book. That is your Jeremiah. You can, oh, Kalabakoski, Bara, blah, blah, blah. Get, get, get this right. Get this right. Don't claim mastery of a profession by your ignorance or by your contempt, by what you have, by where you are. There are men who are doing that stuff internationally. A whole Daniel. The Bible said the spirit of wisdom was in him. The spirit of excellence. The guy was wonderful. He had everything. But Daniel still had to read the work of another prophet. 
He understood what God was saying for a time through the works, through the books written by another man. The problem with Nigerians is that they hate the sight of books. They hate the sight of tapes. You have tapes at the resource stand. Some of you wouldn't buy it because you prefer that 200 naira for suya. You prefer it for what? You prefer the 500 naira for some little lunch and all that. And you see that lunch you are eating is what is stopping you from launching out. Are you hearing me? Because you won't spend that lunch money on a CD that will help you to launch out. That is your problem. You are so contempted. You don't want to read the works of other men. <laughs> you don't want to buy your books written by people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. There are books written by men like, what is it called? Mike Mudok and the rest of them. Get those books. Get those tips. Read them. Don't be a fine face, a beautiful girl, a handsome boy, walking around streets, walking around town, and your mind is empty. Your head is empty. There's nothing in it. Running from one politician to the other. Running from one door post to the other. Nothing in your head. Sit down in a seminar where you will get knowledge that can transform your life. You won't sit down. I met a girl. I asked her. I have a conference. She said, what kind of conference? I said, it's a knowledge-based seminar. Come and learn the art of business and all that. And she said to me, I don't do seminars. I said, you don't do seminars. What do you do? She said, I do church. I said, you do church. And what else? And choir. I said, okay, you are in church. I said, your pastor don't encourage you to go for seminar. He said, I don't remember any day he said that. I said, look at how the pulpit has killed people. This is not pulpit because it is meant to pull people out of the pit. Pull them out of the pit of ignorance. Pull them out of the pit of lack. Pull them out of the pit of, of failure. Pull them out of the pit of business failure and all that. That is what the pulpit is meant to. But this same pulpit, some men are getting people into not even just pits, ditch. They are getting them into wells. It, drowning their lives and their destinies. You go to church and do religion. Two hours you're out of church. You are not sure your head was brushed. You think church is a place for doing religion. What has brought me on this plane? Don't look at me with that kind of eyes. I'm not the pastor, my friend. I'm a balanced pastor. That's why when I go to these men don't understand my identity. You see, they were calling Jesus all kind of names. Who the men say I am? You are Elijah. Some say you are this. Some say you are that. All kinds of things. Because he was a mixture of many things. He was a prophet. He was a teacher. They call him rabbi. He was a mixture of different things. We have pastors who are wearing long rope. The only thing they know how to do is to vibrate on stage. They, I feel the power of God here. Yeah. They anointing. Prophecy. All of the high prophesy. Are they good? Yes. Can I, do I do it? I do it. Me too. I see things. And I also prophesy. I do all of that. But you need to balance it. There's a place for wisdom. As a pastor, I need to be versatile. I need to know something about economy. I need to know something about business, about leadership. I need to know something about even the media, communication. That's why there's nothing I can't write on now. I've written all kinds of things. Anything you mention, I've written it in books. On relationship, on marriage. You can't sit on me as a pastor and fail in marriage. It's not possible. Because the word pastor actually means shepherd. What does a pastor do? He takes the sheep to their pasture. So if you're sitting on me as a media person, I can take you to your media pasture. You're sitting on me as a business person, I take you to your, your field of business pasture. My job is to take you to your field of career pasture. That's what a pastor is meant to do. Can't you see the way Jesus told Peter, go and open the mouth of a fish, you'll find money. Put your net this way, you'll find money. One time, Matthew and the rest of them came to him, or Philip, or whatever. Master, why not drive these guys away? There's no food to eat. He said, it's simple. Get me five loaves of bread, two fishes. They brought it to him. He said, okay, tell them to sit in group of 50s. Look at that man had arithmetic statistics, mathematical wisdom. He broke a whole 5,000 crowd. He said, let them sit in group of 50s. Put leaders under them. He said, okay, get me that. He gave thanks to God. He involved the spiritual and used wisdom to distribute little. So he understood management principle. He knew how to use little to get more. And some people in church are crying. The problem is I have not gotten all the capital. But you have little to start with. But you don't know the laws of multiplication. There are laws called laws of multiplication in business. You need to know how to multiply your income. Jesus understood it. That was a pastor. Why? All of you, open your mouth now. In the name of Jesus, I command bread and 
fill your mouth right now. Why didn't he do that? Why didn't he do it? Why didn't he do it? Why didn't he do it? I read you my final scripture, then I close you for this morning session. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved of God as a workman. If you are a businessman, you are a workman. You are a teacher, you are a workman. You are a music minister, you are a workman. You are a pastor, you are a workman. You are a student, you are a workman. Whatever you do, you are a leader, you are a politician, you are a workman. But look at the key for success. This was Paul speaking to Timothy. A workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth. And that translation says, rightly dividing. Can you divide the word of truth in your profession? <laughs> That thing that makes you stand out. You know, knowledge actually means sword, sword, sword. It's, if you anywhere you see sword in the Bible, it talks about knowledge. It talks about knowledge. Can you divide issues in the media? Can you divide issues in the business world and economy? It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge to solve problems. It takes knowledge to do that business. It doesn't matter what you do. Success is not in what you do. Success is not in what you have. Success is in who you are. You can be a teacher and teach with style. The whole school. The whole parents will need your attention. I've seen teachers who are making millions just by teaching professionally. They know something other teachers don't know. How many of you need that wisdom right now? You need an anointing. Your head has to open up. We can measure the amount of virtue and weight you carry. By the knowledge stored up within you. Put anointing, put knowledge. Ask me to choose one. I'll go for knowledge. Because knowledge is a raw material for manufacturing anointing. Anointing is not the raw material for knowledge. We're talking about globalization and innovation. What are you innovating? It takes knowledge. What are you inventing? What are you creating? What product are you creating? What services are you creating? Which one are you doing? You are just looking at people doing this stuff. You don't have value for knowledge. Africa is a consumer continent. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa. And the most consumable nation. We consume everything. We consume toothpicks in volume. Yet we don't produce it. Rain falls in this nation like no man's business. Yet we don't, we don't own indigenous plants. People even come here to process our water for us. We don't own the technologies. We have to transfer technologies to do it. Our industries. Look at even our rice meal here. It's white men who is packaging, who are packaging our rice for us. The best we do is to eat it. We waste everything. That slavery mindset must die. You must kill that mindset. Become a book addict. Become a tape addict. Become a knowledge addict. Have value for information. Get those tapes no matter the cost. Get those books no matter the cost. Go for seminars no matter the cost. Pay a price. What you don't know is that in the 21st century, knowledge is going to be the most expensive commodity. Now some of you are hearing it free of and you're not doing nothing about it. I say it's going to be the most expensive. Books are now selling on the internet. Before you get information on how to do business, you have to click in, pay in dollars or whatever. It's happening now. And it's expensive. It's going to be expensive than the clothes you wear. So in this age, why few persons are succeeding, more be failing. Everything has manual now. You even buy a phone, you have manual. You don't even read it. You don't know what your phone contains. You don't have one percent idea. Can you see it comes in knowledge pack? Your phone is a knowledge embodiment. They put manual inside. You don't even read it. You, you need to open up that stuff to know what that phone looks like, how it functions. But you won't read. To operate a speaker now, operate a mixer, you need knowledge. I say even to wear your own clothes now, you need knowledge. 
So why do you hate knowledge? The word started with knowledge. The word is ending with knowledge. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That was knowledge. <laughs> it was knowledge. God took advantage of the spiritual in combination with, the knowledge, with knowledge to create the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. So combine anointing, combine the spiritual, combine creativity. You can create your own world. So God took advantage of the spiritual. The spirit hovered. So when he saw the spirit, God said, let there be. He created light. So a Christian who has both power and knowledge can take his word. And guess what? The first thing he created was light. That light stands for knowledge. Let there be light. It was the light and the spirit that created the universe. The light and the spirit took the whole world. The light and the spirit created the... You need to get this thing, my friend. Go and get light into your head. You want to see darkness in your finances disappear. Get light on how to make money. Get light on how to keep money. Get light on how to multiply your income. Lift up your hands right now. Begin to talk to God in this place right now. Talk to God. Little, ask God, I need a baptism of wisdom. Give me moments to pay the price for information. To pay the price for knowledge. I don't want to walk around church smelling, Lord. Change my mind. Give me a teachable spirit, a teachable heart. Give me appetite for knowledge. Cure mental laziness. I'm not hearing you. Lift up your voice everywhere you are right now. Focus on the spirit. The anointing of God is in this house right now. And that anointing is coming on your mind. It's not coming on to do any other thing. It's coming on your mind. The key to stand out, the key to be different, the key to be distinguished is the anointing for knowledge. The anointing for knowledge. You need that anointing. Anybody who told you that the essence of church is to play religion has killed you. The essence of church is to equip you so you can do wonders in your world. So you can create your world. So you can create the kind of life you want. So you can create the kind of future you want. Lift up your voice everywhere you are right now. Lift up your voice everywhere you are right now. Lift up your voice. There's an anointing coming on your mind. There's an anointing coming on your intellect. There's an anointing coming on your mentality. It's going to brush you up. It's going to brush you up. Shake <laughs> Take out five minutes and ask God for that anointing on your mind, for that anointing on your intellect, for that anointing on your mind, on your mentality. Everywhere, lay your hands on your head right now. Lay your hands on your head. Ask God for that anointing. You need it on your mind. Ask God for light. Change my mind, oh Lord. Make it ever new. 
change my mind, oh Lord. Make it ever new. Oh, let me hear everybody now. Lift up a voice and say, oh, change my mind, oh Lord. Make it ever new. Change my mind, oh Lord. Change my mind, oh Lord. Oh, change my mind. Make it ever new. Change my mind. Change my mind. Oh, make it ever new. Let's be. right now. Change my mind, my mind, oh Lord. I want to be like you, God. May I be like you. Just sing it one more time. Change my mind, change my mind, change my mind, oh Lord. sing it oh may i be like you may i be like you may i be like you god may i everybody raise your hands and your voice and sing it may i be like you may i be like I want to be like Jesus. I want to think like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. Yeah. May I be like I want to do the things Jesus did. Oh God. May I be like you. Yeah. Hey. Oh, may I be like you. May I be like you. May I be like you. Two more times. Say.
We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.